All right. Hi, everyone. Okay, we're doing a Shakyamuni Buddha this morning. And let's just settle into a nice, comfortable seated posture. And I'll let me share my this image. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So take a nice deep breath and just settle in. So, you know, for some of us, it's quite early in the morning. For some of you, already morning's already started. Some of you, it might be the middle of the day or very late at night. So just wherever you are at at your day, just kind of meet yourself there. Okay. Is that it? Right. <clears throat> Feel the sensation of your feet on the floor. If if you have your feet down, make sure they're flat on the floor. Feel the heels, the side of the foot, the big toe mound, the little toe mound. <clears throat> and all your toe pads. Feel your sits bones in the chair, shoulders aligned with the hips. And you can have your hands just nestled comfortably in your lap on just resting on your thighs or... And then um, shoulders are aligned with the hips and your ears aligned with your shoulders as best you can. And now imagining you have this beautiful string of pearls of light stretching from the base all the way up through the crown of your head and beyond. And just lengthening your spine. Don't forget to breathe. And then go to the crown of the head and relax your scalp and forehead and eyes. Nose, cheeks, mouth, back of the tongue. The jaw, your ears. The back of your head. So just allow a softening to come in to your face and your head and your scalp. And your neck, shoulders. Relax your throat, imagine it opening. And relax your chest and belly and all of your limbs. And bring your attention back to the breath, noticing the sensation of the air as you're inhaling and exhaling. A little bit cooler as you inhale, slightly warmer as you exhale. And while you're meditating, imagine the corners of your, of your mouth lifting very slightly as if you're about to break into a smile. Be aware of sound in your environment and allow the sounds to be there. Trying not to follow them with the mind, trying to figure out what's going on. It could be a person in your home, a pet, a car on the street, neighbors. And then just notice how your mind is at this time of your day. Try to put some space in between your thoughts. Just 
just noticing what's there and taking a step back and looking at with some level of objectivity. And bringing to mind all the people of your life, your loved ones, and the ones you don't like so much, and all of us strangers, so many of those. And remembering these relationships are all interchangeable. And they're all the same, all these folks, as you and me, just like me, you, they want to be happy. They don't want to suffer. They all have this extraordinary capacity, this unbelievable potential. So I think we'll do this meditation on Shakyamuni for the benefit of all these people and all the sentient beings and for ourselves as we're moving along our own spiritual path. So every aspect of this um, visualization of Shakyamuni Buddha is made of light. It's transparent, intangible, and radiant. So imagine at the level of your forehead and between six and eight feet away is a large golden throne, and it's adorned with jewels and supported at each of its four corners by a pair of snow lions. And these animals in reality are manifestations of bodhisattvas and they have white fur and a green mane and tail and they're also made of light as is the throne and on the flat surface of the throne is a seat consisting of a large open lotus and two radiant discs representing the sun and the moon one on top of each other and these three objects symbolize the three principal realizations of the path to enlightenment, the lotus renunciation, the sun emptiness, and the moon bodhicitta. And seated upon this is the Buddha, who has attained these realizations and is the embodiment of all enlightened beings. You can imagine his body is of this beautiful golden light, and he's wearing the three the saffron robes of a monk. And his robes do not actually touch his body, but are separated from it by about an inch. So he's seated in the vajra, or full lotus posture, so that's each foot over the opposite thigh. The palm of his right hand rests on his right knee, and the fingers are touching the moon cushion, so his palm is down. And this, the fingers touching the, the cushion signify his great control. His left hand rests in his lap in the meditation pose, so facing upwards, the palm facing upwards, holding a bowl filled with nectar. And this is, you know, medicine for curing our disturbing states of mind and other hindrances. You know, and Buddha's face is very beautiful. He's always depicted this very symmetrical face, beautiful lotus-like eyes. And his smiling, compassionate gaze is directed at you and all other sentient beings simultaneously. So he has no judgmental, critical thoughts. He's accepting all of you exactly as you are, exactly as you're showing up. He has these beautiful cherry red lips and um, the lobes of his ears are long. His hair is blue-black and each hair is individually curled to the right. It's not mixed with others. And every feature of his appearance represents an attribute of his omniscient mind. And rays of light emanate from every pore of Buddha's pure body and reach every corner of the universe. And maybe we could even say universes. 
And these rays are actually composed of countless miniature Buddhas, some going out to help living beings and others dissolving back into his body, having finished their work. So really try and get a sense of the presence of this Buddha in front of you with this very active light and little tiny Buddhas going out, coming back in. Rays of light coming from him. So imagine this idea of taking refuge in the Buddha in the same way that you would take refuge under a tree, a cool shade in a hot day. That you take refuge in your doctor when you're sick. And recall Buddha's perfect qualities and his willingness and his ability to actually help you. So make a strong request from your heart to receive his blessings, to help you become free from all your negative energy, misconceptions and other problems, and to receive all the realizations to enlightenment. So imagine your request is accepted and a stream of purifying white light, which is in the nature of the enlightened mind, flows from Buddha's heart and enters your body through the crown of your head. And just as the darkness in a room is instantly dispelled the moment you switch on a light, the same here. The darkness of your negative energy is dispelled upon contact with this radiant white light as we recite the mantra. kindly put that mantra in the chat if you don't know it. And feel that all your negative energy and problems and all your subtle obscurations have been completely purified and your body feels blissful and light.
Now imagine a stream of, of, of golden light descends from the Buddha's heart and flows into your body through the crown of your head. And the essence of this light is all of the excellent qualities of his pure body, speech, and mind. And so some of the examples that they talk about in the text is that he could uh, transform his body into different forms, animate and inanimate, in order to help living beings according to their individual needs and their particular states of mind. And with his speech, he can communicate different aspects of the Dharma simultaneously to beings of various levels of development and be understood by them in their respective languages. <clears throat> and, and also with his speech, he can be heard at great distances. So with his, um, so his mind sees very clearly each atom of existence and every occurrence, past, present, and future. And he knows the thoughts of every living being. And such is his awareness in every moment. And if you think about what that means, that's an extraordinary level. That's extraordinary capacity. And so imagine that these infinite good qualities flow into every part of your body and concentrate on this experience, this blissful experience, again while we, while we repeat the mantra again. Om Daya Muni Muni Maha Munaye Soha Taya Muni Muni Maha Munaye Soha Taya Muni Muni Maha Munaye Soha Taya Now feel that you really have received all of these excellent qualities of Buddha's body, speech, and mind, and you feel completely blissful, light and blissful. So we just meditate like that for a couple of minutes.
Now imagine the eight snow lions absorb into the throne. The throne into the lotus and the lotus into the sun and the moon. And they in turn absorb into the Buddha, who now comes to the space above the crown of your head and melts into light and is, dissolves into your body. And your ordinary sense of I feeling unworthy and burdened with faults and all of these other wrong conceptions that we have disappear completely. And in that instant, you become one with the Buddha's blissful, omniscient mind in the aspect of vast, empty space. So again, we'll meditate like this again. And imagine you can expand your mind And if thoughts should appear in your mind, uh, just bring the mind back to the breath or you can imagine them dissolving into light. So now imagine from this empty space appears in the place where you are sitting the throne, the lotus, the sun and the moon and upon these yourself as the Buddha and everything is in the nature of light. This is very important to remember. Exactly as you had visualized in front of you before and really feel that you are the Buddha, you do, you are this energy of this Buddha. And try and identify with his enlightened wisdom and compassion, kindness and brilliance, this omniscient mind, instead of, you know, identifying with your usual insert, incorrect self-view, which guaranteed is usually a little bit negative. So try and lift yourself above that. And now imagine surrounding you in every direction are all those people of your life and more. All of space filled with sentient beings, living beings. And that includes all the tiny little insects. And generate love and compassion for them and recalling that they too want to achieve happiness and peace of mind and freedom from all problems. And now that you're enlightened, you can help them. So at your heart are a lotus and a moon. And standing upright around the circumference of the moon, reading in a clockwise direction, are the syllables of the mantra, Tayata Om Muni Muni Maha Munai Svaha. And the seed syllable Mum, <coughs> excuse me, stands, stands at the moon's center. So now imagine rays of light. <coughs> this is actually your wisdom and your compassion emanating from every letter and spreading in all directions. And these these letters of this mantra, this light, reaches countless sentient beings and completely purifying them of their obscurations and delusions and filling them with inspiration and strength. 
So let's just recite the mantra together again as we as we imagine this. Om Jaya Jaya Muni Mahamuna Yeso Jaya Jaya Muni Muni Mahamuna Yeso 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 Jaya Excuse me. And then think now I've led all sentient beings to enlightenment, thus fulfilling my intention for doing this meditation. So imagine that everyone surrounding you is now in the form of Buddha and experiencing complete bliss and the wisdom of emptiness. So, you know, you might be thinking, how is this possible? It's not possible. But really, this kind of practice is known as bringing the future result into the present path. And it's a powerful cause for our own enlightenment because it helps us to develop conviction in our own innate perfection, our own Buddha potential. So what we have just done in this meditation, we will definitely accomplish one day. So just let that sink in for a little while. And take that thought through your day as we dedicate all the positive energy, any insights you may have gained during this meditation uh, to your eventual attainment of enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings. All right, everybody. Lots of love. <laughs>